All right, welcome back. This is M Dog, and we are here at Octuba, and you'll see on the map here where we are. It is at D four coordinate sixty three one thirty three. I happen to see um, something come across. Uh, I believe his name is Grazi. Again, not an English speaker, but does a lot of RF four content. I believe, and he had showed himself in a very brief video fishing this spot it seemed like he was catching a lot of the um kesslers and so i thought we would try it uh just to show you what i'm using here we're using a very similar setup to what we were using at donuts again uh, mayfly um 18 size hook on this one we've got the 3.1 kilo leader and one thing i want to test is um, to see if the bite rate is just as good with the 5.4 liter. So we'll either use the bolo rod for that or we'll just switch the leader on this one. But let's go ahead and get started here. This back in the day, I will say, was a very good spot to level up float fishing. Uh, I'd say after Tuba was out for some time, this spot was discovered. And I know a lot of people did do float fishing, leveling up their float fishing here. Um, I'm getting a little bit of audio interference. Okay, I think that fixed it. We may need to use the bolo rod just to give it a little bit more. Here, let's do something real quick before we give up on the match rod. What time of day is it? So you can't see it, but it's 9, uh, 9, 12 in the morning. Let's go to a clip of 12 meters. Let me make sure we are at depth of one meter. Let me check the depth on this one too. We want to keep them the same in case we do switch back and forth. All right, let's see. So it's drifting that way, of course. Let's just throw it out there, get it to where we want it, and then give it a chance to drift a little bit. Hopefully we'll start seeing some bites. I um, Hopefully we can figure this out. If it's like it has been in the past, this has been a really active spot. Not only can you level your float fishing really well here, but you um, also make an okay amount of silver, I would say. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. See, this is what I was wondering with this small leader. I, I, these fish are a little bit bigger. Oh, that's a perch. That's not even what I thought we were gonna catch. Okay. Um, that's a little weird. Let's go to depth 80. And, uh, oof, that was kind of scary. How big was that perch? 742. Yeah, that was kind of scary. Hopefully we can get dialed in here. It may take me a minute. Um, I don't think it was like a particular time of day where this was good. I think it was just good all the time. So any of these herrings are just really pretty decent silver. You would kind of expect to catch more of the Kessler, to be honest, than the other type overall, but. All right, we're starting to see them now. I'm sort of wondering if it's possible that I don't know I, I'm just not sure if I remember having it that far away from the shore I might bring it in like we tried 10 meters I might put it back at 10 or even like at 8 and just see if the bite rate is still about the same um, this is picking up though we're starting to see fish activity here but let's keep trying to get dialed in. I also don't know about the depth. The next thing we could ch try to change. All right, so that's just a lot closer.
Now, back when I've done this in the past, I do think I've used multiple rods, but I was hoping that the bite rate would be such that we wouldn't feel the need to use multiple rods. Of course, with that bowler rod, we do have a second option and we could set up a third if we wanted to, but that does get pretty intense for float fishing. Okay, let's see what this is. So that's what we're looking for. A nice marker Kessler herring. All right, out of curiosity, so let's get this set up. It's at one meter depth. Let's go down to eight meter, just like we had there. Um, and let's just see. So the only difference in this setup other than it's a bowler rod, I guess really what I should do is try it on the on the match rig to see if it makes a difference. But this has a little bit larger leader. So we're in less danger of snapping our leader with this one because it's at 5.2 or whatever instead of a 3.2 liter. This is where it starts to become like sort of chaos in my opinion. If the bite rate is decent, we don't necessarily want to be going back and forth. I don't think, but All right, we that did not we did not miss that bite. All right, there the other one goes. It just depends on how long these bites last. So we've missed that one twice in a row now. Um, so that one, mm, that one almost stayed on. The other issue is this other, yeah, we're just missing them. I mean, we're getting bites on both, right? But bite only lasts so long. So it might be better to have both of them down and be able to get to the one that goes under more quickly. All right, we got that one, right? I can't tell you how much more I enjoy using a match rod than these bolo rods. All right, we got to that one just quick enough. So I think we're still catching them pretty decent on the bolo even with the larger even with the larger um, leader so it may not be re required to do a five point I mean a three point something fluorocarbon leader um, but what I want to try to do real quick is set up I mean, we've already caught, you know, some decent fish. And once you get dialed in, you'll just start. All right, so a couple things I want to do. Um, I want to take the bolo rod and disassemble it. And I want to use the other match rod. And let's just put a Lacerti put 6.5 line on it um, something easy to see so we could try fixed float let's let's do that uh, 5.4 
still 18 hook and still the mayfly okay so we now need to put this at one meter depth and I want to move everything to 10 meters and just see how this works for a little bit. All right, let's just watch this for a minute. Do I not have two of my... Hmm... That has drifted quite a ways without a bite, hasn't it? That is not ideal. I'll tell you what, what would be ideal though is having a second match waggler holy cow they're so big i don't think the fish is going to be strong enough to pull that down we'll try i probably just need to go to the store real quick and buy another waggler just like we're using Let's see if that float is just not, uh, is too strong for these fish to pull them down. What have I done? Wow. There you go. So that's a nice Kessler right there. And if the bite rate is still pretty good. It is just a lot safer to, safer to use the bigger fluorocarbon leader, I feel like. Yeah, I could tell there was a fish on there. It's just a small one. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, these still bite okay at night. I might be mistaken on that, but I'm, I seem to remember fishing these at night as well. Did we catch it? No, it got off. And then we want to go ahead and reset the other. Oh, I closed it. I don't usually like to close them, but... That went down fast. That went down really quick. That was a perch. I think the, the front one is still at, um, we might have missed it. I think we just missed both of them, to be honest. Yep. Sometimes it really just messes me up to have more than more than one in the water, you know. Just depends on how fast your bite is, though. If you're getting them pretty quick, then just fish with one. If sometimes it's going the whole way down and not getting a bite, then yeah, it probably makes sense to have two out there. That one's about to get a bite now. 
So let's just get this in the water and then put it down. If As long as we don't have the wrong one in our hands, we can usually get to it. Look at that. Sometimes it's just immediate. I actually think that, that the back one is now maybe getting better bites. Um, that's a decent one. Is that not a marker? Yeah, see, that's where I feel like the 3.1 liter, like we're going to get in trouble on that. Let's go to 5.4 on both. Is there a 4 point something liter? Because that might be ideal. A little bit more strength, but not, not overdoing it. All right, what is this one on? This one's clipped at 10. I feel like 10 is actually getting better bites than... Um, what is this one clipped at? It was at eight, so let's put that one at 10 as well. Did it jump off? I think so. some we're getting a lot of smaller ones I, it, it's making me wonder like are we not really dialed in here so this is going to slow down our catch rate obviously to run take this time to run to the store but i want to see about the smaller leaders Back when I did this before, I was just using telescopic rods to, which are preferable to bolo rods in, in terms of ease of use. And since it's such a small cast, it's really not a problem. But let's see, are there, um, are there feeder leaders that are fluorocarbon that are between three and five? Well, I guess we could make our own, right? Oh, here's 4.4. All right. Okay. Let's try those. You know, the other thing we can look at is weekly. Um, just the different fish that we could possibly catch here. What are the sizes that we're looking at? One point eight kilo. Whew. We're gonna have to be so careful not popping even the four size leader. When we're using 18 hook. Should we try 16? I'm pretty sure we used to use 18 hook. But we don't we do want to see him get a little bigger you know maybe we should look up and make sure we're using the right bait for the big boys did i go too far wasn't it at like 133 Okay. Were those not feeder leaders? Holy cow. Did I just buy classic leaders? No. I am so confused. But 
there's something with that leader that you can't use it on oh that's supposed to be classic leaders it is classic leaders these aren't feeders i am losing my mind okay first of all let's check the records weekly um Oh, we're probably not going to catch one that size. All right, let's just try to be careful. I don't want to go back to the store again. So we need to get a classic leader. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Whew. Try to do too many things too quickly. Wait, which size is on this? The bigger one, okay. All right, we should be good as long as we don't have one of them in our hands when it goes down. See how red that got? Like we all almost popped it there and this is only, oh, that's an eyed. Yeah, there's no way we didn't miss this one, right? It was underwater for so long. So these, of course, are classic leaders that we're using because we're not doing feeder fishing right now. We're doing float fishing. That's a nice fish. I think I will probably be a little surprised that even with all of our mess ups and me trying to get dialed in, we still will probably make a reasonable amount of silver. Um, I mean, if you're leveling up your float fishing and, you know, making what 150 silver or something in a, in a day like if you can really i don't know if they'll bite at night but if they do bite at night like that's a pretty good combination of things and then you never know you might get lucky with a cafe order we're gonna have to reset that second rod if it doesn't drop soon I don't think we want it floating much farther past that. Okay. Now we just want to push this away real quick and try to get this before it's gone. Oh, that's when it works out beautifully and you get two for one there. Doesn't always happen though. All right, look at Kessler's herring by weight. We only have three markers, y'all. We are not dialed in or this spot is not that good. I'm guessing it's me. Um, okay, so... How deep do y'all think this water is? Do you think we're, do you think our depth is too deep? Did I move this to 80? All right, let's try 80 and let's go back to clipping two. Again, we're gonna have to get dialed in. We're not dialed in. All right, 12 meter, not clipping of two, clipping of 12, 12 meter clip. And then the other thing we probably should do is just take a second, pull out our telescopic rods and just make sure it's not because we're using match rods. I, to me, that just looks way too far away. I don't remember this spot being that far. I could be wrong, though. We'll give it a minute, see what the fish look like. That's going to be undersized.
That looks better. Yep, that's what we're going for. So keep doing that. Let's not do it like that. depth and um, we're gonna do much cat much closer cast here I just have a feeling I, I, I still I just have I have a feeling here. Let's do like a seven clip, and let me go to. Sorry, I'm just figuring this out. I, I thought that I would just be able to come here and remember from my previous experiences. Um exactly what we did i want to get the same hook size all right 18 hook mayfly put this in the water let's put this in the water should be much closer and then let's just see much better I was casting way too far out I just think I think that's probably the case but we'll see Now, if we hit a big one on the on the telescopic, it's just going to pop everything because you know we don't have a reel on there. It's just a telescopic deal. But I don't think we <coughs> wait that long. Let's just reset it. So far, this has been much better. So do I start the video over? No. I let you all learn from my mistakes. I knew like somewhere in my mind, I could just, I remembered that when we used to do this, we were not looking at, look at that one. Holy cow. We were not looking at floats that far off the shore. It was just closer. But also, the time of day has improved too. I mean, this is like ideal fishing time. So that's a part of it too. But we're just hitting them fish after fish now. That one was a little small to be fair, but. Oh, shoot. Oh, we still got it. Nope, we didn't. Okay. These bites happen too quick. To me, I wouldn't use three. I would stick with two. And 
Unlike some situations, I actually think it's better to not have one in your hand because you need to be able to get to either one fairly quickly. And as long as you do, that doesn't happen too often where you miss the bite. And the little bit I've seen, we're gonna miss one of these bites, obviously. The little bit I've seen, that's a nice one. Telescopic seems to work just as well as the match. I mean, I'm using match mostly, I guess, because I, it's new to me, so it's fun. Um, also, having that reel on there means if I catch myself and don't just snap it, I might be able to sort of ease it in without breaking the leader. Where on the telescopic, it's very hard to do anything other than just let it break and try to shuffle backwards, that kind of stuff. But it is very tough. I think your amount of non markers will be a lot less if you fish this close to the shore. But honestly, even if you are catching some non-markers, the bite rate's good enough, you're still leveling up your float fishing. And when you do catch them, you are, um, you're catching fish that actually per gram have a pretty decent silver return. These white fish are pretty good. Both of them, of course, go under at the same time. And those black spined, I think, are even better silver. Because they're like slightly more rare, maybe. Oh, crap. You know, I, I stopped pulling. I lowered my friction brake to eight. Didn't matter. I don't know. I just don't know. 80 centimeters seems to be the right depth too. So I'm going back to the uh, larger leader. See if the bite rate seems to still be okay. I guess it was bound to happen eventually. into a big one. That's so nice getting those black spines. Just get a little light out here. I don't know how well they're gonna do through the night, but I do wanna find out before we wrap this up. Okay. One thing I also wanna try, if you look where we are, what am I thinking of? It might've been off this island. I guess what I'm wondering is, like, is it possible that there might be some um, is it even possible let's go to weekly eastern bream because if these don't bite at night yeah, garlic dough Anything recent? Yeah, a lot of them. So apparently the Eastern Bream are doing pretty good right now. All right, let's just go loot rig. We do want to be able to hear it. Um, there's a little bit of river motion here, not as much as other places back here, but a little bit. Let's put a little bit of Bream mix on there. 
Uh, what line do we have? 9.8 fluorocarbon, so we don't need that. And let's go with eight size hook and garlic dough. Just curious. Um, and we'll just do like a, I don't know, 13 meter clip right up into that area there. Uh, that probably was far enough actually. And so what we want to see is once it's on the bottom, does it stop moving? Yeah, it looks like it does. Okay, let's just see. Let's just see if there's any Eastern Bream around here. Someone else may know of exactly where they are around here, but if it's within walking distance, then, and if this bite slows down, you could really increase your silver revenue um, by catching Eastern Bream. But like I said, I think these might bite through the night okay. I missed it. I looked away for a second. I need to put my drag back up. That was quick. Is that still a herring? Yeah. So, so far, it's past 11 p.m., by the way. It's 23, 23, 12. We're still getting little nibbles on the match rod, at least. Somehow, this one was able to make it without a bite, but... All right, let's check it out. So, just to recap, what has worked better for me is, like, Ah, we're going to miss both bites now, is like a seven meter clip. I mean, just casting right in front of you, basically. Oh, it's so nice that this stayed on there. Now, it is weird because all of a sudden we're not catching herring. <laughs> so it may be that it's not going to continue with their bites. It might just be that we're temporarily catching eyed here. When's the last time we had a herring? Uh, the black spine was less than a minute ago, so I get, maybe we're still good. We'll see. It might die off completely. It's, it's 11.30 now, so it's not like we're in the late night time yet. But we want to test it. And if it really starts to die off, you could put a second feeder out. Both of them made it all the way, didn't they? Yeah. It's an okay. It's okay. It'll be more silver than I think. I mean, you look at that and you're like, did I make like 30 silver? Well, actually, it'll probably add up to more than that. But again, if we had been dialed in from the start, that would help. And um, let's watch these for a minute. Then let's go move that feeder. We, we should have some sort of Eastern Bream or something on there by now. That's not That spot's not working, obviously. Might just do like a 20 meter clip right here. See if there's happened to be an Eastern Bream right here where we're fishing at. So look how much it's died off now. So I think I'm wrong. I don't, I'm, I'm starting to think these don't bite through the night. I mean, we would certainly have something. Some kind of activity. I think. All right. All right, so let's just try 20 meter clip right here where we are. You know, just even if there's like a baby Eastern Bream or something. Just knowing if there's anything there, it would be good. All right, so we're catching nothing. Nothing. I mean, once it hit like 11.30 p.m., it seems like the bites have completely died off. Um, now, should we go a little deeper, a little farther out, 12-meter clip, and then one-meter depth? By the way, 
what worked during the day where I felt like we were more dialed in was 80 centimeter depth and only about seven meter clip. So the next piece of information to make this even more ideal, I would say is Um, find a place to fish for eastern bream. And I just haven't tried in a while. But obviously people are catching eastern bream, so there's spots. Uh, back in the day, right off the tip of this island used to work really well. There were also some places down in the southern part of the map that worked, but are we getting a nibble there? Maybe not. I don't know what it is, but I do think the feeder is slowly getting a bite. All right, so that didn't work. What if we go like, um, same clip, 12, but we're gonna go to 1.5 meter depth. See if anything happens here. And I'll wrap this video up soon. I, I just, I wanted to check some stuff at night. Um, just to know for myself if, if it's worth, if it's just like a daytime thing or if it's worth looking at this in the evening. And it looks like it's just daytime. Now I bet we all the way till 11.30 p.m. it worked. Oh, did you see that bite I just missed? All the way until 11.30 p.m. it worked and then I bet it'll start up again at 4 a.m. I mean, it's gonna be a short window where you won't be able to do it. Man, we missed a bite. I'd love to know what that was. Is that line moving? It is. Is that a roach maybe? I don't know, it is a little bream, but it's a regular bream. Um, yeah, I just don't know. I'm not sure about the Easterns right now. So we've got float fishing up to 63.6. We are slowly getting there. Time is very slow. All right, let's put it back on seven meters and 8.8 .8 meters depth. So I remember that. And yeah, if anybody has any Eastern Bream spots, it'd be nice to tie the herring spot with a place where you could slide over to, preferably close, but I guess if you had to use a boat, it still might be worth it if you're really wanting to like get a bunch of silver. I mean, if you hit a nice Eastern Bream spot, then that's gonna increase your silver per 24 hours significantly. Um, yeah, you really wanna find something to do close by during the evening hours, if possible. Um, Let's see here. Cafe is down here, right? That's the fish market and that's the cafe. All right. And we do have a regular bream order, which would be nice. Um, but nothing else that we're fishing for here. So let's see how much they add up for. Oh, it's 100 silver. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, and we weren't dialed in. I'd say easy for a regular day, um, 150 silver. Don't you think? I mean, if we were really dialed in from the start, fishing right from the beginning, look at that black spined herring, 33 silver for 238 grams. That's sick. I mean, if you get some RNG on a few of those, like your silver amount for the day is gonna be through the roof comparatively. Um, so the biggest Kessler's herring we had was 637 grams and it's worth 8.9 silver. 
But the idea here is if you're dialed in on the markers, you're catching so many of them in a day that kind of like those Pontic Shads at, um, at Donuts, that that really increases your total amount. So that's pretty interesting. All right, my hope tonight is whether it's by video or by stream, I haven't decided which, depends on how the rest of my evening goes. My hope is to cycle back, do another session of these, and then also go back to Amber and do another session of um, carp. We made almost 600 silver on carp last night, and I desperately need to get some more silver. So we need to hit that spot again. I think we fished there for over a little over an hour and a half just under two hours, but we were messing around for some of that time. But anyway, it was a pretty good spot. Um, that video is also up on YouTube, but that was actually from my stream. So thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great night. And um, I'm going to try to circle back after doing some other games. We're playing a little bit of Smite with friends for fun. Um, and then we'll probably stream a little bit of Mountain Blade Bannerlord 2 tonight and then maybe circle back to RF4. We'll see how the night goes. But thanks as always. I will catch you next time.